Hey guys, I am guessing you need to learn how to graph a rational function. I'm hoping I can help you do that and take a little stress out of your day maybe. All right, so when we graph these, we are going, well, okay, actually first, I wanted to show you what these graphs can look like, okay? Here's a few examples. Obviously this is not every way that they can look, but I wanted you to kind of get an idea of what we're looking at, okay? Now, if this looks intimidating, we're gonna walk through it step by step, so don't worry. All right. Remember I said there are steps here, there are, here, here there are, here they are. First we're going to factor, then we are going to find our asymptotes, vertical and horizontal or slant, and we'll check for holes. Then we're going to find our X and Y intercepts, and then we're going to figure out the general shape of our graph using our preferred method, and we will talk about that once we get there. So my first thing I'm going to do is factor. Now, if you need a factoring review, I will link a video in the corner, but I'm just gonna tell you right here, right now, that this factored is x minus four times x plus three. And that is over x minus two, which doesn't need to be factored anymore. All right, from here, guess what? I've already done step one. Step two is we are going to find our asymptotes, okay? So if you have been doing math for any amount of time, which I'm guessing you have, you know that we do not deal with zeros in our denominators. It's like one of the biggest no-nos in math. So asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, I should say, are formed where the denominator could equal to zero. So to figure out where the denominator would equal zero, I'm going to set it equal to zero. Fancy that, right? So I have x minus two equals zero. I'd add two to both sides and get x equals two. That is my vertical asymptote. Now you'll notice I have an s in parentheses because you can have more than one sometimes, but in this example, we just have one. Now, oh, I should have said, I did not forget about this, okay? So holes are formed on your graph if, pretend when I factored this, that this had factored to x minus two here. So then those would cancel each other out. That is where a hole is formed in your graph. Obviously this example does not have that. I'll link a video in the corner with an example where the graph has a hole. But for this one, we don't have any holes. Back to my asymptote at x equals 2. We represent an asymptote on our graph with a dotted line. So this is how I'm going to show my vertical asymptote. If you plug this into a graphing calculator, you probably will not actually see the asymptote with a dotted line, but you will see that the graph approaches there. When we do it by hand though, we like to show it with a dotted line, okay? All right, so we found our vertical asymptote. My graph will not cross this line. We figured out there aren't any holes in this one. Next is our horizontal or slant asymptote. You will not have both of these, okay? But we're gonna check to see if we have, if we have a horizontal or a slant. For this, we follow some rules. Don't we love it when math gives us rules? Just know that these don't come from nowhere. They weren't just pulled out of the air. There's a reason for them. And I'll link a video in the corner explaining where these rules are from, you know, if you care about that or if you just like to watch math videos in your spare time. So when we are looking for horizontal or slant asymptotes, the thing we are looking for is our degree. The degree is the highest exponent in the top and then we need to look at it in the bottom. So on top, my degree, my highest exponent is two. And on the bottom, you might be saying there's no exponent down there. But remember, if we don't have an exponent, this is really like x to the first. So my degree on the bottom is one. So if my top degree is greater than my bottom degree, which in this example, that's what we have, there's no horizontal asymptote. We're going to check for a slant. If the degrees are equal, we divide our leading coefficients. If the top is less than the bottom, then our horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. So for this one, like we already said, the top is greater than the bottom. So we don't have a horizontal asymptote. We are going to check for a slant asymptote. You have a slant asymptote if the top degree is bigger than the bottom degree by just one, and in this case it is. So to figure out what that slant asymptote is, I am going to do long division with these. Yes, 
If you need a review on this, I'll link one in the corner, but I'm also going to quickly do it here. So I am dividing X, oh, hold on. I wanna do it this way. <clears throat> Magic. All right, we have X minus two, and we are dividing that into X squared minus X minus 12. So when I'm doing this, I ask myself, why do I need to multiply X by to get X squared? Well, I'm gonna multiply it by X. X times X gives me X squared. X times negative two gives me negative two X. And then I'm subtracting this, just like when we do normal long division, which in this case, I'm subtracting the whole thing. So what I'm really doing is changing the signs. So I'm subtracting X. I like to circle it when I change it to help me remember it. That's not like an official math thing. That's a me thing. Um, and then I'm subtracting a negative, so that's going to go positive, okay? All right, so when I subtract those, that's going to be zero. And then I have a negative X plus 2X, so that's going to be X. I'm going to bring down that negative 12. And I ask myself, what do I need to multiply X by to get X? Well, I need to multiply it by 1. 1 times X gives me X. 1 times negative 2 gives me negative 2. And then I am subtracting these. So I end up with negative 10 and that's my remainder. So when I am figuring out my sign of asymptote, I do the long division and I actually don't have to worry about the remainder. So this is my slant asymptote. So I'm gonna write that here. I did long division and figured out my slant asymptote was y equals x plus one. So back to our graphing line days, this means my y-intercept is at one and my slope is one over one. So it's going to look something like, I always try to line this up really well and it seems to take me a long time. So do, do, do. Oh, see, and then I get off. <laughs> Be patient. Don't change videos. Okay, I'm trying to make it look nice. All right, here we go. So again, I am going to represent this with a dotted line. And then a fact that you need to know as you are graphing these is, guess what, guys? Horizontal and slant asymptotes can actually be crossed sometimes. Vertical ones, absolutely not. Horizontal and slant ones can be crossed, though. Now, I know what you might be thinking because I totally thought it too. What's the point of them, right? If they can be crossed, what? why are they even there? Well, they still help us understand the shape of our graph and help us know what areas our graph is approaching. So they're still very, very helpful. All right, there you go. Hopefully that was a good enough explanation. Okay, we have found our asymptotes. Now we are going to find our x-intercepts. So to find those, I am going to set y equal to zero. And I could set either of these equal to zero. I should have had equals y here. There we go. I could set either of these. I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to have zero equals X minus four times X plus three over X minus two. So to solve this, I would go ahead and multiply both sides by X minus two because that gets rid of that nasty fraction. And then over here, X minus two times zero is zero. So I'm going to have 0 equals x minus 4 times x plus 3. And then I go ahead and set both of these equal to 0. So I have x minus 4 equals 0 and x plus 3 equals 0. Add 4 to both sides, I get x equals 4. Subtract 3 from both sides, and I get x equals negative 3. These are my x-intercepts. Okay. But these aren't lines, right? Like these were, this was, I plugged in zero for Y and I got two X's. When I plugged in zero, I got four for X. And I also got negative three for X when I plugged in zero for Y. So I'm going to plot those at four zero right here and at negative three zero. So I know that my graph crosses the x-axis at those points 
and at no other points. Those are the only places it will cross the x-axis. All right, now finding my y-intercept is also helpful. So let me use this same little card here, but now we're finding the y-intercept. So to find the y-intercept, I'm going to set x equal to zero. So I'm going to have y equals, and again, I could plug it into either one. I'm just going to plug it into this one. So zero squared minus zero minus 12 over zero minus two. So all that ends up just being zero. So on top, I'm left with negative 12. And on bottom, I have negative two. And negative 12 divided by a negative two is going to give me a positive six. All right. So when I plugged in zero for x, I got six for y. So let's go ahead and grab that. Bam. Okay, guys, I've almost done all my steps. We factored, we found our asymptotes, we checked for holes, we did our x-intercepts and our y-intercept. So now I just got to kind of figure out what this graph looks like. And we have a pretty good idea. So keep in mind that when we are graphing this, we're trying to represent all the answers that X could be and what Y would give you, right? So I really need a representation of this graph everywhere, except at this, uh, not horizontal, sorry, at this vertical asymptote where it would make my denominator zero, so it's undefined. So I need a graph everywhere else. Now, we kind of have, well, there's probably more than two, but I'm gonna tell you about two options. Two options is to just pick some more points and plug them in to get a better idea of what this graph looks like. For example, you could plug in 10 or plug in three and for X, see what you get for Y, and that'll help you see the shape. And you could also plug in some over here. Go for it if you want to do it that way. Now, me personally, because I know a lot about functions and about asymptotes and I've graphed these a lot, I can kind of just know what this is going to look like by the what I already have here. I know that the graph is going to hug these asymptotes and it's not going to cross the x-axis again and it's not going to cross this. So that helps me to know that this side is going to go something like this. See that? And then over here, it's going to hug this slant and hug that vertical. So it's going to go something like that. Again, if that felt a little too vague for you, or you're like, I would like more substantial points, please go ahead and plug them in. But now you can see with these arrows, this is going all the way over to negative infinity, right? So I have a representation all the way until two, because that's going to keep hugging that. And then it picks up right here and it keeps going all the way to positive infinity. All right. I hope this made sense. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. The last step, I know you're like, I thought we were done. You are. But the last optional step that can be very helpful is to go ahead and plug this into a graphing calculator and make sure you are on the right track. And if there's anything off, go back and look at your work and just figure out where you got a little bit off. But we always do want to do it by hand first and then check it on our graphing calculator to help us make sure that we did it correctly. All right. I hope this made sense. Thanks.